Row buck eruption, one stand, six bucks in play. Roy gets the best reaction of his 30 year stalking career. You'll never, ever, ever, ever see that many bucks coming in like that again. I mean, that would just be mad. Grouse fake news. We look at how the antis are trying to weaponize grouse shooting this glorious 12th. Browning on tour. Jason Doyle has a stab at the Maxus 2 challenge. Talking of which, you can win one. We have news, we have hunting YouTube, and it's our 12th birthday. Welcome to a still prepubescent field sports Britain. <laughs> Don't worry about the sticks, just worry about the bugs. That is one of the problems you can encounter. You start calling, and then we had four bugs coming all at the same time. And where they were all coming at the same time, they were just like scrabbling around. You're trying to identify each bug. If it had just been one bug, it would have literally just come you know, bowling right into us. But uh, you know, obviously, you saw them start to come, and then that was it because you know, they, they, just want, they were just intent on fighting. And, yeah, yeah, and they're just seeing the other bugs off their territories. Okay, we've got a doe and a buck out there. So let's just see if they come.
you'll never, ever, ever, ever see that many bucks coming in like that again. I mean, that oh, was just crazy. mad. Just to see them everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in yeah, in in all the years I've been playing with roebucks, I mean, you, we've you know we've had some phenomenal responses, but just to see that much activity, we've had a little bit of sparring, we've had chasing, we've had fighting. I think it would have absolutely destroyed Carlos if we'd just <laughs> taken him out for in his first buck had been something good because he would have never ever yeah, beaten it. So. <laughs> With, You're not with, spoiling him. Are you being with, like uh, a proper parent? No, exactly. We're looking after him. No, I've got to, I've got to be nice to him because he has promised me a huge access when we go to Argentina. So I've got to find him a decent buck now. Carlos, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll find we'll find a representative. <laughs> we, we start from the bottom, yeah, as you said. We need to learn first. Sorry, <laughs> say again. <laughs> See? Don't worry. No, so oh. English. Oh. Well, I'm worried. What he tried to do was put it on camera and therefore there was no going back, Carlos. So it's just a way of him trying to seal the deal. So I'm glad you came back quickly. And we really, really look after him in Argentina. And when the pigs, that, the tasks are too big, I will probably, yeah, too dangerous for you, we'll go for the little ones. Well, exactly, first. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a fat wobbly bloke. I don't, want, I don't want to be playing with big pigs. <laughs> I, I might fall over. And you know, it was an amazing experience. It's just it's no, crazy. phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, ne I never, never expected so many no, I mean, that was beautiful. Around and I've seen a lot of videos and this is my first time, so well, thank you very much. I very much appreciate it. Well, no, as I say, we'll, uh, we'll try and get you a decent one now. Definitely the sticks are not my favourite. Pardon? The sticks, not my favourite. No, no, you were struggling on those, weren't you? Again, it, once you practised on them, they're phenomenal, but it does take a little bit of practice. <laughs> Unfortunately, the shot was back a little bit high, that's why he dropped, because um, we probably just clipped the spine there. Um, so he, he dropped on the spot and was finished, but obviously we'd always want the shot to be further forward, but unfortunately just as Carlos took up the pressure on the trigger to take the shot, you could just see the deer move forward, and it's amazing you know, how much that will have an effect. I was hoping that we were just going to let get him out, but he just he wanted to stay in the cover there. But yeah, it's just beautiful. Isn't it? When he was coming up, I could see that he was a really, really nice young buck, very good potential. Definitely not one to take. We've got a lot of you know, a lot of poor bucks here that we're going to take out. I was desperately just trying to get him to come that last yard, just so he would come out into the open. But I'm pleased he didn't spook anyway. He was just a bit like. Mm. Not quite sure. I couldn't, unfortunately, I couldn't go any further back. If I'd been able to crawl through this edge, I would have been able to get him out, just move the call back. But it wasn't to be on this one. But when you can get the deer to come up to within five yards of you, and he wasn't fast, he stood there for a good minute, minute and a half. And it's just always fascinating and beautiful to watch them. I mean, obviously, I've got deer at home. I'm privileged that I get to see deer close up all the time. But yeah, when you can call a wild deer in like that and just admire it and watch it, it really is just absolutely stunning. You know, people talk about trophy hunting being terrible, of the, obviously not the hunting community, but um, the general perception and the labelling for trophy hunting is very poor. Whereas in reality, trophy hunting creates the very best habitats and creates the very best animals and creates habitats that are absolutely perfect for them to thrive in. So, yes, 
that animal in five, six years' time will potentially be a trophy. And once he's past his best, we will take him. But he's past his genetics on. We've got the young generations coming on. Once they get to their best, it's a very steep decline. So from a management perspective and from an ethical perspective, once a deer starts to get older, obviously their teeth wear down, so they're unable to feed, they're unable to keep the weight on for winter and they end up, they can end up starving to death or they end up on the peripheries of territories and getting run over. So the whole idea of keeping your age balances and taking the older animals once they've reached their prime and gone past their prime um, is all part of the management. But as an aside, you get the older trophies as a, a, an asset which then brings in money to the estate that allows you to rent estates and then keep those estates in pristine condition to allow a thriving population and that is that is the same the world over so that doesn't matter whether you're talking about trophy hunting and trophy management and habitat and wildlife management over here in Africa or anywhere else in the world it's exactly the same principles and the only thing it does is benefit the animals. Thank you, Carlos and Roy. A wildlife performance most people outside the shooting world haven't a Scooby-Doo as possible. Coming up, find out how to win a Browning Maxis 2 first from Scooby to Shaggy. And it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The gun trader hack is attracting no win, no fee, ambulance chasing lawyers. Solicitor firms have been putting ads on Facebook feeds, trying to drum up business from the leak. Hackers stole information from the market leading gun sales website and released it on the internet. The data consists of names and addresses of registered users of the site, but no details of guns or whether the users are gun owners. The website was hacked on July the 16th. The University of Northampton has put out research asking whether grouse shooting is sustainable. Backed up by this film, the answer is a resounding yes. The 242-page paper reviewed the evidence base of sustainable driven grouse shooting against the various alternative uses of moorlands, considering three major factors – economic, social and environmental. Independent chair of the report, Professor James Crabb from Oxford University, says the research team looked at all sides of the argument in an effort to be as objective as possible and to remove any emotional and political elements which driven grouse shooting has in the past engendered. Lord Botham has been teaching Chris Packham a thing or two about birds. The cricket legend took to Twitter to congratulate grouse moor managers responsible for the hen harrier population rising for the fourth year in a row and posted a link to the data. He said TV presenter Packham and Wild Justice were holding the graph the wrong way up and described them as comedians for insisting there is a continuing catastrophic decline of the hen harrier in England. And you can see more about our cricket legend's views on grouse shooting in his chat with Charlie at the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre. Link in the description below. The John Muir Trust has declared war on deer in Scotland. In an interview with the Oban Times, the Trust's Mike Daniels claims more deer need killing to save the planet. This would help woodland and peatland recover, allowing more carbon capture to combat a perceived climate emergency. The Trust manages 25,000 hectares of Scotland. Deer managers on neighbouring estates told Field Sports News that animals that wander onto the Trust's lands are killed. Daniels says the charity will step up its culls. At the same time, a study by Stirling University suggests planting trees on moorland will produce no additional carbon storage. A new petition is calling for trespassing on a British farm to become a criminal offence. The petition was prompted by the growing number of animal rights extremists walking on the farms without permission, stressing animals and in some cases stealing them, calling it liberation. Besides invasion of privacy, there are health and safety risks, including the chances of spreading disease. Petitioner Megan Grant says farmers are being pushed to breaking point and some arrested for trying to protect themselves, their livestock and their property. Meanwhile, Sheffield Hunt saboteurs have been leaving these leaflets on land in the Peak District. Thanks to Jeff Smith for the story. The owner of an alpaca says she would rather die than have the animal put down. 
the alpaca Geronimo has twice tested positive for bovine TB, so as to be destroyed to protect the country's food supply, says DEFRA. Owner Helen McDonald, who lost a high court battle to keep it alive, claims the tests were false positives, but won't allow a third. McDonald's high profile campaign has seen Boris Johnson publicly refusing to step in to prevent the animal's death. At the same time, some farmers have come out in support of Geronimo, claiming DEFRA's TB tests are inaccurate and healthy cows are being killed. Others complain that not enough is being done to stop the spread of the disease in Wales and are demanding an England-style badger cull. DEFRA has dismissed claims the test is inaccurate. McDonald, meanwhile, is calling for people to come and help her save the animal, according to animal rights campaigner Dominic Dyer. So Helen McDonald, the owner, is asking people in the local vicinity or further afield who feel very passionate about wanting to protect this animal to come onto her farm in South Gloucestershire and actually act as human shields to sit around the enclosure and to peacefully prevent anyone coming on and actually trying to take Geronimo away or to put him down on the farm. Now, the very presence of people who are caring and compassionate and want to stop this happening with the media watching them is going to prevent the government taking any action. A boarding kennel in Derbyshire is appealing for help after thieves stole three of its dogs. Brookfield Farm Kennels say thieves broke in between 3am and 8am on the 4th of August and took two cockapoos named Elvis and Tony and a cocker spaniel named Remy. The thieves drove over a neighbouring field, smashed a window and grabbed the animals. Police have released video of a car they want to track down to question its owners. Anyone with information can call the kennels or Derbyshire Police, quoting the incident number in the description below. Two women described by local press as animal lovers have been banned from a Devon estate. That's after judge found Sylvia Meller and Serena Joyner not guilty of destroying or stealing dozens of traps and snares at the Coom estate in Gittisham. Meller is described by Devon Live website as a leading wildlife filmmaker for her YouTube series about a family of beavers. The website wrongly claims the videos have delighted tens of thousands of viewers from all over the world, as each has only had a few hundred views. The prosecution agreed not to offer any evidence after the judge handed down a three-year restraining order. African community leaders are lodging a complaint to the Charity Commission about the Born Free Foundation. Representatives from Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, Tanzania, Zambia and Zimbabwe accused the celebrity-supported animal charity of waging a campaign of disinformation against hunting tourism that will affect conservation and undermine human rights and livelihoods. The key claim Born Free makes is that hunting doesn't support conservation or local livelihoods of millions of people in the six countries. The leaders say the foundation is soliciting donations using false information. Safari Club International and other hunting organisations have failed to derail a plan to ban trophy imports to the US. The House of Representatives passed the Interior, Environment and Related Agencies Appropriations Act with a section effectively banning elephant or lion parts from Tanzania, Zambia or Zimbabwe. The hunting groups, along with ambassadors from Zambia and Zimbabwe, wrote to House leadership explaining how it's an attack on African sovereignty and the conservation efforts in African countries. An amendment pushed by SCI-friendly lawmaker Jeff Duncan failed to pass. Staying with the SCI and it's good news as one of its wildlife programs has raised $14 billion. Since the passage of the Pittman-Robertson Act in 1937, with the support of hunters, firearm and ammunition manufacturers have paid a 10 to 11% tax on production of firearms, ammunition and other sporting equipment. This tax created the Wildlife Restoration Trust Fund, or Pittman-Robertson Fund. Monies are then redistributed by the US Fish and Wildlife Service to individual states for conservation initiatives and projects. It provides the bulk of funding for nature in the US, and that figure has now reached $14.1 billion. And finally, if you're wondering why there are so many foxes in North Yorkshire, one answer could be the local wildlife and livestock sanctuary. Whitby Wildlife Sanctuary takes in, rehabilitates and releases more than 2,000 birds and animals a year. And this year, it reports, has been a bumper year for foxes. It has 60 of them in cages. You are now to date with Fieldsports Channel News. 
stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, here's a message from IRA UK. Now, this summer, Browning has been on tour. Many of the Field Sports Nation members have taken advantage of the Gunmakers' four events across England. David went to Barbary Shooting School in Wiltshire, where he caught up with David Stapley and Jason Doyle. It is partly COVID related. We haven't had the chance to go and see our great customers and um, we thought, well, why not extend what we do normally and go on a road show and go on a tour with a much bigger range of products and a, a bigger inventory for people to try. And that's why we want to do it. We want to see people after an extended lockdown period and introduce a lot of the new models that have come in during that time. I suppose that's really helpful, the fact that you have got new products, David. So, so what, what have people sort of got hold of and, and really enjoyed getting to grips with? Well, MK11 is really the, the star. Uh, everyone wants to see that. We've got um, two or three of those here, so it's permanently out on test. The Ultra XS, again, is a big star for us. It has been for a number of years now, and that just continues to keep going and going. But the whole idea is that there's a massive range. There's over 60, 70 guns here, and uh, there's pretty much something for everybody. Someone once told me in the industry, people don't miss in a shop. So the fact that they're out there, yep. I think yep. that's the one thing that really is important and way where we should be taking the industry and that people should be have the opportunity yeah, to buy Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, if you buy a car, you wouldn't just buy it from the, from the showroom. You? you want to test the gun. The gun fit is the important thing. So it doesn't matter about the price tag or the brand. If the gun fits you, you're going to shoot better. Uh, this is the best place to actually test the gun fit. We've got qualified coaches here, qualified gun fitters. Hopefully that really makes a difference. Well, it's personal service, isn't it? Which is, it's, yeah, that's, that's, and to that's be honest, the, the dealer doesn't always have the time to do that. So why don't we go out there and, and help people and talk to people in a no pressure environment. Go and enjoy yourself and uh, hopefully we'll sell some guns as a result. And raise some money for charity, David. Tell me about that. Yeah, we support the Royal Marines charity. They're a great bunch of guys. And um, on our Maxis Challenge today, we give everybody a free entry to win a gun. All that money then goes to the charity, oh. which is our uh, nominated charity. I've managed to get one, David. Um, yeah. Jason, Jason got six. Get so. six. Well, we're, yeah. we're going to ban him from the gun, obviously. Oh, you, that's, that's but, cruel. That's but, Dave, cruel. you need to go in again a number of times just to try and match Jason <laughs> and obviously earn some more money for the charity. One. This has been a, a test event really to see how things panned out. It's gone very, very well. We hope to ex expand it for future years. But thanks today to Barbary, Q in particular at Barbary here, who have been very, very uh, helpful and great hosts. And what a great location as you can see. And the weather's been kind again. So I can't believe it. So thank you. <laughs> Poor Jason, but great shooting. He hadn't been behind a shotgun for 18 months, and we will ignore the shame that DW has brought upon us again. Now, as Jason is a Field Sports Nation member, he, like every other member, gets to watch Field Sports Extra on a Tuesday night, which means he has a chance of winning a new Browning Maxus II. To sign up and get your hat in the ring, click on the link in the description below. A semi-auto is what we use to shoot grouse is exactly the kind of nonsense that the antis have been landing on the wider media in the run-up to the glorious 12th. Ben O'Rourke lifts the lid on antis fake news. It's that time of year again when newspapers, anti-field sports groups and social media experts take aim at grouse shooting as the glorious 12th approaches. Regular as clockwork, they accuse gamekeepers of crimes spread disinformation about shooting and sow more hatred towards rural communities. Each year it seems to be getting more intense and some of the claims more outlandish. The amount and the volume of people who are campaign groups who you know are, are very active and very visible around the 12th of August is 
there's no real surprise. I mean, one of the interesting things is you could say that grouse shooting has actually increased the amount of employment it sustains because it's also sustaining campaign groups whose raison d'etre is to get rid of grouse shooting. Prominent anti-group Wild Moors has been at the forefront of the misinformation campaign, telling the Yorkshire Post that Yorkshire water is kicking shoots off its land. The organisation is doing nothing of the sort. When we spoke to Yorkshire Water last week, it was it was very clear that their policy hasn't changed. So, so fundamentally, the article suggesting that Yorkshire policy has changed regarding shooting isn't true. It is true that Yorkshire Water are changing, changing most of the way that they deal with their land holdings. So they basically have a project called Beyond Nature, and that Beyond Nature project is a sort of holistic view as to how their land holdings will work. So it's, it's very important for Yorkshire Water that they can look at their shoot tenants and they can make sure that their shoot tenants are delivering for net gain, again, whether that be carbon, whether that be wildlife, or whether that be communities or the economy. Personally, that's, that's absolutely right. I think that the best, most forward thinking shooting tenants should be aligned and working with people like Yorkshire Water. To put it mildly, there's been a bit of schoolduggery suggesting that this change means an end of shooting. It doesn't, it doesn't mean an end of shooting at all. The Yorkshire Post story is one of several Wild Moors has put out recently that target grouse shooting. Another claims the National Trust is reviewing its grouse shooting policy, with Wild Moors insisting it is the only organisation to have been told about it. As with Yorkshire Water, the National Trust has not released anything publicly to support Wild Moors' claims. I find it quite interesting that the Yorkshire Post would run an article without, without checking with it with anybody else. We've also written to the Yorkshire Post as well. We've effectively said that we don't think it's very good, or it's certainly, to put it mildly, it's certainly not best practice on behalf of the journalist to run an article without having a counter-argument to it. Across the border in Scotland, the Cairngorms is under fire from rewilding Britain. The rewilding supporters write that 44% of the park is used for driven grouse shooting. The Cairngorms National Park Authority hit back immediately, pointing out that the 44% figure was Heather Moorland as a whole and the National Park was split into various land uses. Gamekeepers, gillies, on rivers and land, deer managers, these are the people who are going to get Britain and get Scotland to where they need to be. It's not going to be the people that are sitting lobbing things on Twitter and having a nice time. It's quite selfish, actually, in many ways. You know, the argument that I don't like something, so replace it with something else that I find more tasteful. That's not where we are, I think, these days. We need people that can deliver. Probably the best thing that people can do is maybe to get off Twitter and go and get themselves a deer management qualification. You know, or learn how to manage fuel loads in the countryside so that we can deal more adeptly with wildfire and future wildfire. These are the people that are, you know, are going to deliver. So the idea that this amount of percentage of land is used for this or that, so so what? Whatever. Rewilding Britain's report includes standard cut and paste complaints about shooting insisting driven grouse moors are associated with the controversial burning of vegetation and the illegal persecution of birds of prey. If we were to use that discrimination in any other section of society, we ourselves would be breaking the law, yet there are people that are doing that and saying that this whole section of society is criminals, that they're all going out and there's a wanton urge to kill all raptors. If that was true, we wouldn't be seeing the increase in the raptor numbers that we've got. The number of gamekeepers has increased over the recent years. What's happening is it's the increase in the report of an incident, not a conviction. The convictions of wildlife crime include, involving raptors has gone down. There are more successful convictions over goldfinches. The vilification of, of gamekeepers has been going on now in an endemic way for you know, several decades. I mean, employees of, of conservation NGOs, you know, do it as well and have done it. And, you know, and NGOs have done it. The vilification of gamekeepers and the, the type of land management that gamekeepers do. So, you know, unfortunately, what that's done is it's created this sort of tinderbox where everyone just lobs things at each other. 
While gamekeepers' estates and shoots go out of their way to follow the rules, update their practices and spearhead sustainability, the Antis are once again sticking to age-old tactics of intimidation and mudslinging. There has to be responsibility taken from the people who, who began this a long time ago, and that will be the way to sort it out. But it's, it's, it's sad, and it's sad that it happens on, on either side because it's not the way forward. Thanks to all who took part in that. And if you'd like more on Grouse, there has been a lot of talk about Ian Botham, Lord Botham's chat with me in the Game Fair Theatre. For grouse shooting lovers, for cricket lovers, we have put up that film and there's a link to it in the description below. Now from the uplands to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. The National Gamekeepers organisation has come out strongly in favour of trophy hunting in this video. It's a film made for the NGO by Johnny and Sasha from the TGS Outdoors channel. Jacko3275 and his friend Johnny reap the reward for spending the winter keeping pigeons off a young crop in freezing conditions. It's a lovely day decoying with 90 in the bag. Another UK film, Efficient Red Deer or Elk Extraction Techniques 101, is hilarious. You need to watch it to find out why. Outback Feral animal control is getting on top of the hog problem in Australia with the help of truck, motorbike and plane released in March this year. It's pretty raw. Another surprising film is by Colorado Parks and Wildlife, a US government agency about how to avoid being attacked by a moose. Just out, here's the tale of two small bucks. It's 2013. Andy from AJP Outdoors takes his dad on his first deer hunt ever after whitetail in northern Idaho. In New Zealand, Clark Boys Hunting NZ are duck shooting. They are after mallards on the last weekend of the season. And finally, Durham Grey Squirrel Pest Control has been shooting greys in the north of England and this is the result. No shooting, just lovely reds and other wildlife. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click the likes on Facebook and on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. Yeah.